Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Relativity. So I hope you weren't put off by the last session because we achieved something truly monumental. We didn't just hand wave. We went together through a mathematical derivation that showed that in reality time is not absolute. For a stationary observer on Earth, if somebody is in a spaceship moving with velocity v and c is the speed of light, they measure time differently than the guy on the spaceship. And in fact, we said that this square root here is less than 1 because it's 1 minus some positive number. And so, if the guy on the spaceship measures his time, say ta is 1 second, the guy on the ground measures something bigger than one second, say 1.5 seconds. So he turns around to the guy on the spaceship and says, you measured one second, I measured 1.5 seconds, your watch is running slow. This is what time dilation means, is that no longer is one second, one second. And this is not an artifact, this is not an error in measurement, this is the way the universe works. The guy on the spaceship has a measurement of time, the guy on the ground has a measurement of time, and both of them are correct. Time is no longer absolute. Let's look at just how bizarre this is. Because this applies to all clocks, not just the light clock. We can use it for a biological clock. So we can, for example, have your heartbeat on the spaceship be the biological clock. So let's say you're an astronaut aboard a spaceship traveling at 0.6c. Again, this means 0.6 times the speed of light. And you measure your heart rate to be 60 beats per minute. What does someone on Earth measure it to be? Well, if you're measuring your heart rate at 60 beats per minute, that means that the interval between heartbeats, according to you, is one second. But according to the guy on Earth, that interval is changed by this gamma factor, which is so key in special relativity. And so let's calculate gamma. 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Well, v is 0.6c. 0.6 the speed of light. So if we just do the math, it's 1 over the square root of 1 minus 0.6c all squared over c squared. That's 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 0.36 take the square root, which is 1 over the square root of 0.64, which is 1 over 0.8, which is 1.25. So the guy on Earth measures the interval between heartbeats to be 1.25. 25 seconds. And so if we say that 60 seconds per minute divided by 1.25 seconds per beat, we get that you on Earth or me on Earth would measure your heart rate to be 48 beats per minute. So look at how staggering this is. You as the astronaut measure your heart rate to be 60 beats per minute. I measure your same heart rate and I get 48 beats per minute and we are both correct. It is not that this is an artifact because you're traveling or this is some funny trick of measurement. No, it is because time is no longer absolute. And this is, an ap this is a remarkable fact. This entirely changed the way we saw the universe. And in fact, I won't uh, torture you with any more math, but it turns out that since time is relative now, length is also relative. So if you are carrying a meter stick on your spaceship and you measure it to be one meter, I would measure it to be less than a meter. And we would both be correct. And we always thought, that space and time were absolute. A meter stick is a meter stick. It doesn't matter if I take it on a plane or I sit with it on the ground, it still measures one meter. But it turns out that's wrong. That time is no longer absolute, space is no longer absolute, everything is truly relative, 
And this was a consequence of Einstein's idea, borne out by the Michelson and Morley experiments, that the speed of light has to be the same for all observers. So, why didn't we notice? If this was such a revolutionary concept in physics, why in the world did it take several thousand years until Einstein came along for us to notice that time is relative? And the answer is we move too slow. We are put in a special slow-moving realm in this universe compared to the natural speeds at which subatomic particles move, at which the speed of light moves. Think of it that a special bubble has been created for us, a slow motion bubble. If we moved at the speed of a bullet, about 800 meters per second, and we calculate the time dilation factor, one second dilates to only 1.000000000000355 seconds. So the difference, even if we were to move as fast as bullets, which of course at the time of the Prophet ﷺ would have been unheard of, time, or at the time of Galileo, time dilates to such a minimal extent that we don't have a clock accurate enough to measure it. And so, in fact, if Tb equals Ta over this square root, if V is small compared to C, which even the speed of a bullet is small compared to the speed of light, then V squared over C squared becomes a very, very small number, extremely close to zero. So it is as if we are dividing Ta by 1, and so Tb equals Ta, everybody gets the same time. And that is why it seemed to Galileo and to Newton that time was absolute. Because if you're moving, but you're moving at a speed small compared to the speed of light, then Ta over the square root is essentially, for any measurable amount, it is Ta over 1, so Tb equals Ta, and we all get the same measurement of time at a practical level. But... A practical level is different than a philosophical level. Philosophically, the universe works differently. Time is not absolute. Space is not absolute. What does this mean? This is an example drawn from a Yale lecture on relativity. It's a beautiful example. One of the things it means is the end of simultaneity. So we used to be able to say, imagine, for example, two babies born at exactly the same time, one in Los Angeles and one in New York. That statement used to have meaning. They, these events happened at the same time. What special relativity has taught us because of the difference in time, because time is relative, is that that statement could be true from the stationary frame of reference on Earth, but for a guy traveling in an airplane or a spaceship, those two babies are not born at the same time. And both people would be correct. The guy standing still on Earth, say in Kansas in the middle of the U.S., or the frame of reference that is stationary with respect to the U.S., and the guy in the airplane, one of them says the babies were born at the same time, the other says no, they weren't, and they're both correct. So philosophically, that is an amazing thing. As a matter of fact, Equally amazing is that we used to think that the distance between Los Angeles and New York is a fixed distance. Whatever it is, however many thousand miles it is, it is fixed. It doesn't matter who measures it. But now we know that space is not absolute, and that measurement is for a guy stationary with respect to the United States. But for a guy flying overhead in a spaceship, there is a different distance between Los Angeles and New York. So, I hope that you are as excited by this as I am. Because what does this mean to me as a Muslim when I realize that everything now truly is relative? There is no such thing as an absolute time. There is no such thing as an absolute length. What that says to me is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only absolute. And so... When the Quran comes and says, 
فتعالى الله الملك الحق that know then that God is sublimely exalted the ultimate sovereign the ultimate truth the only absolute then rests with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my length measurement your length measurement are relative my time your time are relative but that leaves then if there is going to be an absolute this will be the absolute and so this gives me a much deeper appreciation when i say a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim qul huwa allahu ahad allahu samad say allah is the one and only allah the eternal the absolute now i get a sense of how grand that is because without allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there is no absolute for our universe for our world for our laws of physics everything is relative leaving allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be al-haqq and al-samad he is the truth he is the absolute and to me that is a much richer understanding than i used to have before i understood some of the implications of relativity and i hope inshallah you agree with me and we will continue with some more amazing implications in the next lecture inshallah assalamu alaykum